SAP. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv. This is our Cube, our flagship telecast. We go out to all the top events, talk to the thought leaders, experts, <coughs> extract a signal from the noise, and bring that to you live. And uh, uh, I'm here with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Bob Hill of SunGuard, the availability company, you know, uh, a really great brand. Bob, welcome to the Cube. Um, we're here at Sapphire. We're hearing a lot about cloud this year. Not th I don't know if you hear last year, but not a lot about cloud last yeah, year. It's, it's interesting. It's really become mainstream almost. It's good news. In terms of the conversation, you know? yeah. Uh, and we're seeing just the uh, adoption rate. The customers are getting much more comfortable. You have to get past that initial concern of what is cloud, how do you define it, what's it all about. But once you get past that and they, they look at how you've implemented it, it's not obviously going to vary by provider, but they look at how you put it together, you can really uh, put together a very, uh, uh, very good um, value proposition. Bob, well, well, welcome to theCUBE. We know each other. We worked at HP together back in the day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, Dave and I always talk on theCUBE here about how, how things have kind of looked like the past and client server. And, you, you know, back going back in the day, client server, SAP made a ton of money on these deployments. Absolutely. They completely <laughs> milked Hard the customer. Hardware with vendor's best friend. Hardware <laughs> vendor's best friend. <laughs> and yeah. Channel partners, and, you yeah. know, the service the providers were friend. making 5x yeah. on the dollars, millions of dollars, year deployment. So what's the take with cloud? How do you view, okay, now now we're in the cloud environment where, you know, that's over. We talked about that last year, like, hey, you know, those, those deployment times are changing. They're mm -hmm. faster accelerating. What's the mix of business now relative to the customer base with cloud? Is it, how much is it really changing um, relative to one, how fast deployment solutions are being deployed, and then the dollars involved? It, it changes the whole deployment approach around completely. If you're talking about greenfield deployments or even, or even uh, point solution deployments, you, it changes the model in that um, you used to have to, determined how much you needed up front, you're guessing at that, and um, and so the customer had to make a lot of decisions up front. But what do I build, how do I build it? And you didn't always get it right. So with cloud you have a lot more flexibility in that you can implement resources on demand, what you need, only what you need, and when you need it. And as you get further into a project and your end state requirements become much more obvious, then you can go ahead and build out that correct end state environment, and that can be on cloud or can be on discrete hardware, whatever makes the most sense. With everything virtualized on cloud, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can deploy. So what specifically are you got going at Sapphire? I mean, what's your, what's your take in the, sh in the event and what do you guys got going here? Well, again, great event. It's just, uh, for me, just great to meet the people that I work with all during the year. Um, and what we're trying to do here is to really work with the partners uh, to talk to them about how we can help them to provide better uh, implementations around SAP uh, and customers as well in terms of how we can better manage these environments. We, we bring a unique, I think, a unique approach to cloud in that our background is is disaster recovery. In fact, I'm glad you said we're an availability company versus disaster recovery because uh, that's really <laughs> been what's changed with SunGuard. I mean, you, yeah. customers think of us as a disaster recovery company, but but it's really that, that availability culture. We're bringing that to how we develop and develop products and deliver solutions around cloud. And the, and the market's changing too, if you look at that, it's like disaster recovery is kind of looked at as, oh yeah, they're doing a lot of tape and off-site stuff. When you got SSD and flash stuff going on mm -hmm. around the storage paradigms, you know, the applications are changing. So well, the availability becomes the number one, and with real time, that's... And the problem ultimately. with you know disaster recovery from a you know, mental model is a lot of people are like, oh, disaster recovery, that's... It, it, I never use it, it's just there it's until I need it, it's insurance policy. Right. And I think your mindset has changed and, and clearly is about, hey, how do we get value out of those assets? Absolutely. You know, and, 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 and leverage that for the operational and aspects of the business. Correct, in fact, we've reinvented ourselves around that. Uh, we're a huge investor, we have a huge investment in, in VBlock, so our cloud strategy deploys multiple VBlocks, different locations, different countries, so we're providing multi-site capabilities, so the availability is baked in now. So we're building in resilient infrastructure at multiple locations, um, but also part of that availability approach is uh, even things like um, uh, data security and effective change control discipline. All of those things tie into providing an overall availability approach. It's holistic in terms of how we look at it versus something that you, you deploy the infrastructure and then you worry about DR as a bolt-on. 
It's all together. That's how you have to do it. Today. How did that decision come about to sort of, I mean, we, always, we talk a lot in the Cube about converged infrastructure and everybody's sort of going after it. It's a big land grab. How did you guys decide to do that? You probably had some of your own reference architectures internally doing your we own did. systems mm -hmm. integration. Um, and I would imagine there had to be some people in the organization that had it not invented here. <laughs> Absolutely. Attitude. So how did that change come about? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, it was a pretty significant departure for us where we normally do all the infrastructure design and have our hand in every every aspect of it. But really where it's helped us, and we've seen this play out, we, just, we deployed vBlock in 2010. Um, so an early adopter on the platform, and just the fact that you have uh, scalability at a massive level within a single frame. So you can grow that uh, and not have to worry about interoperability, that type of thing. And from an operations perspective and management perspective, it's, it's, we can be much more productive, we can develop tools. It just gives us a, a better way of extracting the most uh, value from that, from that platform versus having skill sets in a hundred different areas. We can really focus on one single thing and then convert that to better value for the customer. How has um, virtualization changed your business model. It's turned it on its head. Yeah. Absolutely, because how, how so? Well, just the fact that it abstracts the hardware layer. I mean, historically, we've invested a lot of time, effort, energy, skill in de in developing programs that took the complexity out for the customer. We have to recover these environments, but there were so many moving parts to get that up and running, and that's you know what we've done for many many years. But with virtualization. Uh, the fact that you're abstracting that hardware layer, it takes a lot of that complexity out for the customer, and it gives us the ability now to be able to recover in much uh, shorter periods of time in terms of data recovery point, uh, and the cost point has gone way, way down. I mean, it's to the point where things that were only reserved for the, the financial companies that were willing to invest tens of millions of dollars in replication strategies, with that's our DF and replicated production environments, it's come down to the, even the business one users, with 10 users can have replicated but data. didn't that, Bob, uh, necessitate a complete change in my mindset and business strategy for you guys? Absolutely. Because you, you lived in that world of, you know, the tip of the pyramids, you know, super expensive, um, and you sort of geared towards servicing that world, and you see virtualization come about, there must have been an aha moment, or maybe it was an uh-oh moment, or maybe it was a, <laughs> a little, hey, let's a go little of each, I think. Yeah, that said, okay, now um, that's going to force us to change the economics of our business, but the opportunity, of course, is a much larger base. Of, yeah, of it's prospects. something we just had to do. You can't, mm. um, you can't just uh, <laughs> ignore the fact that virtualization was going to change everything. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, you're taking your your uh, this revenue stream. If you don't reinvent that approach, someone else is going to do it for you. Uh, so again, it's changing things completely. But again, we're trying. We can. We can. We're not abandoning that. We we take that. What's really ingrained in our culture in terms of how we manage availability for customers, and keeping their businesses running. And that's what we bring into the application space, specifically around SAP, as an example, uh, in terms of how we we deliver SLAs, how we take care of the customers, how we again looked at that from soup to nuts, how we keep availability uh, in line for customers. Because, you know, <laughs> obviously. Uh, this is not a backroom application anymore. I mean, you've seen today with the mobility products, the IT is right there at, at the, the, the customer level. So you can't afford downtime. It's just, it's just not an option. So availability is part of uh, how we have to design solutions. It's what customers demand now. So I have a couple questions around SAP. First, first of all, what's unique about the S SAP customer base? Maybe you can make some observations there. Well, we've seen in terms of cloud, they're a pretty conservative lot. I mean, they're yeah. used to building um, pretty extensive uh, infrastructures to support uh, to support SAP. Um, so we have to make them very comfortable with the fact that we have a solid approach. That's where VBlock has really helped us as well in terms of our approach. And that, and that uh, once you once you look under the covers in terms of how it's built, it's very traditional in many ways. So it's not a case where you've got a cloud solution where data is everywhere and customers aren't comfortable with that. You can still meet all of the requirements in terms of how the data is managed, where it resides, how it's backed up, how it's recovered, and how day-to-day -day management. So. Um, as long as we, it, in terms of that customer, we've got to make sure we cover all the bases, that they, this is their critical business application, that we've got everything covered, uh, and uh, they, they focus on the details. Once we get past that, then we talk about uh, really day-to-day -day operations, how we help them to be more productive. So, for example, with cloud, another great benefit is they can expand on demand. So, we see, we see dedicated infrastructures where customers aren't deploying updates, they're not running pilot projects because they don't have the capacity. They don't have enough disk, they don't have enough uh, service of too much planning involved or they, too. Or they, they don't have, have, have the budget. Or they have it, they just can't <laughs> get it on that server. Oh, budget, time, people, yeah. planning, so, so things, all the above. So things just don't happen. Yeah. And 
And this is a case, you know, the companies need to operate in the real world. They've got or the real time, really, and that you can't you can't afford to, de to de delay those kinds of projects. So they can purchase on-demand capacity in cloud, uh, and then um, again do things that they never could do before. So it's an enabler, an enabler for customers. Awesome. How about um, hybrid cloud? Are you seeing? I mean, I was saying earlier with another guest. We did a survey last year, and very few people were doing hybrid cloud. A lot of people were saying that's a buzzword. It was early last year, maybe even late the year before, but that's starting to change in the broad base. Um, do you see that, and do you also see that in, in SAP base, or is that a little we, bit further behind? Um, we see it in a broader base. SAP, not as much yet. Uh, I think we will, but we, we d delivered uh, our, uh, our strategy in terms of the cloud architecture was to include hybrid and um, that kind of capacity right from day one. So we can cross-connect discrete systems with, with uh, cloud-based systems, multi-tenant, private cloud, whatever that customer wants, we can, we can develop an approach that accommodates all those things. Because you're going to have downstream applications that need to be connected, that need to be dealt with, not only for the production side, but for even the recovery side. So on both sides of that equation, um, we need to be able to connect to all of the uh, systems within the enterprise. I want to switch topics a little bit and talk about SunGuard. Can you talk a little bit about the um the anatomy of your business in terms of what you sell. How do customers engage with you? What are they buying? Take us through the sort of life cycle of an, of an engagement. Yeah. Well, to your sort of, um, discussion earlier, we're often seen as a disaster recovery availability customer. It's often the entry point. There's a lot of respect for what we do. Uh, that allows us to really get in to talk to customers. It's as, hard as what really we a, do. You know, yeah, but, but as a, it's kind of a, a, a neutral party in a way. So there's no yeah. real strong vendor uh, affiliation. We can work with, we're, we're vendor agnostic in that way in terms of working with different platforms. So we can come in and be objective about what needs to be done, how we can support these environments. That's really how we start a conversation. Uh, not, these, this is our product list, this is what we can do for you, but what are the challenges that you're facing? What are you struggling with? How can we help solve some of these problems? And uh, we don't always have the right fit, but we can we can guide a customer, and in most cases we can provide so some level of value. So that's a consultative engagement? Or it's a consultative it a selling. leader? Or? It's a consultative approach in terms of how you, you sell, frankly. Oh, that's, a, that's a pre-sales sort of giveaway, if you will, or do, you, or do it's, it's customers of, actually engage? Within? It's part of the conversation. Yeah, okay. um, you know, I, I, you, you still fall into a situation oftentimes where it becomes a product sale, but when you're talking about applications at least, it really has to become more than that. You've really got to capture what the customer needs so you're putting together the right approach. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's, the, uh, that's the way we look at it. Um, and again, that's across the board, whether it's a uh, whether it's specifically a, a recovery type of requirement, standard managed services, co-location, or, or application. We have a, a very broad set of products and services, and th the real value, I think, for SunGuard is the ability to integrate all of those. So, that's either on, on customer premise or in your cloud, is that right? It's, uh, it, we can host, again, discrete systems within our infrastructure. We have um, 30 some odd um, production facilities uh, within our, 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 our framework. Um, or it can be on our cloud. Um, customer prem, typically not as much. Um, generally, it's uh, we're a hosted services provider, so we can wrap more value around it if it's on our prem. In terms so you don't of do SLAs. anything on customer site. We do some of it, yeah. but very little, frankly. Um, so specialized cases where. Yeah, we do some remote management, but we're primarily on site because we build SLAs around around that. We have the best, as far as I know, best SLA around app availability for SAP, 99.9 percent at the available at the application level. Um, so that's yeah. something that. Yeah, that's, we've got that's, to a, have our that's an important distinction. It's not you're not talking about the light on the server. Correct. Right. You're talking about. The, what the user sees. Right? Exactly. If that system's not available to the end user, that's considered downtime. If, in fact, you have a scheduled period of, of, of maintenance and it goes 10 minutes beyond the scheduled period, that's, that's downtime. downtime. Right, right. That's how you have to look at production Not like Google's SLA. Not anyway. quite. No, a little bit too. <laughs> or Amazon's. <laughs> that's, uh, all right, good. Um, well, John, I mean, you know, we're seeing a lot of messaging around cloud, uh, but, but I'm still hearing that the SAP base, Bob, is is, is, is somewhat slower than the broader market uh, to, to adopt. But maybe this new thrust and the success factor acquisition is mm -hmm. going to change that mindset. Yeah. You know, what do you think? Uh, I think so. In fact, we, we're so committed to that. Any new customer we bring on for SAP is strictly on our cloud. We're not even offering it as a, as a standalone server option because of all the benefits. And we, uh, we're willing to walk from that business that the customer has a dif difference of opinion on that, but we try to show them the value, and in most cases, they absolutely do see it. So we're committed to that. All right. All right. Bob, well, listen, thanks very much for, for coming to theCUBE. Bob Hill with SunGuard, uh, the availability company. We've seen Thank the you. transformation, driving virtualization, working with uh, partners like EMC, doing converged infrastructure with things like vBlock and uh, 
Appreciate your insights. Thank you very much. Great to meet you. Okay, we'll be well. right back on our, with our next segment right after this break. So stay tuned from Orlando, Florida, SAP Sapphire Now.